chairs, the essence of sitting, an act most commonly referred to in such vulgarisms as resting on one's behind, unloading oneself, and popping a squat next to daddy. Each and every day, our eyes are likely to happen upon a chair and acknowledge its presence, and, in fact, you have probably touched one with a portion of your grotesque body sometime in your pitiful existence. But are chairs, in truth, the useful and, for most humans, the essential devices we have always assumed them to be? Before we begin this arduous journey to discover such a flabbergasting truth, a pilgrimage on which we intend to emotionally stimulate you far beyond your personal thresholds of overflow, knowledge of what a chair is defined as is a necessity. To be considered a chair, an object must first meet certain requirements. Requirement number one, the object in question must have the area in which you may seat your cheeks, your pooper, the dookie maker. In other words, this is where your fudge extrusion system is positioned in a posture of relaxation. This portion is called the seat. Requirement two, the object in question must have legs on which it can stand. These parts of the chair are called legs or shafts. The number of legs varies, though there are typically four shafts. <laughs> Still bright. Re requirement three. The object should also possess a back to rest the sitter's back up against. Without this essential component, the object will become a stool. In other words, the chair for really obese people who wouldn't normally be able to fit into the confined space of a chair. Currently, the huskiest problem in the modern workplace is the wheeled computer chair. Today, society holds an inexplicable belief that the wheeled computer chair is a good thing. This belief is wrong. Wheeled computer chairs are an overrated magnet of terrorism. Not only are there different varieties of chairs, but there are different positions in which to expend computational skills, such as standing, sitting on the floor, in fact, I'm sitting on the floor right now, or slightly leaning. Look at these men, all sitting in wheeled computer chairs, all worshippers of darkness. This man worships Cheslinder, a patron deity of those with small bladders. This man is God's worst creation. Wheelchairs are chairs with large wheels attached to a seat. These wheeled chairs allow the user to be seated while traveling, thus eliminating the need for legs. Without the vital mechanic of walking, the human body will become enlarged with excess fat and become obese increasing the risk for depression and immediate death. I hate myself for having to use a wheelchair in this walker for, because of my, my crippling obesity. I'm going to release the salty juices of my eyes in the corner now. I'm so disgusting, I smell of waste. While wheelchairs used by the paraplegic are deemed acceptable, there are many people who can't walk who still accomplish amazing thingies without the help of a wheelchair. But it's extremely rare, and we can't expect much from the average chair-laden person. A legless man, spent west, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, approximately 50% of the leg. <laughs> Humans die trying it every year. While he did use a wheelchair, it was only for a fifth of the 2,000 foot climb. We're all very proud of <laughs> Some wheelchairs of the enfeebling obese are actually wider than normal chairs, thus allowing more space to fill, and thus allowing the user to continue to expand. If the wheelchair was never in existence, those of the severely obese wouldn't have a crutch to fit into society and would die off. Coaches are one of, 
if not the largest incarnations of the chair. They are usually cushioned and are able to fit multiple persons. The couch's problem is that it's just too comfortable. Once you start sitting, you don't want to not be sitting. It's true. This dangerously high comfort level leads to excessive amounts of sitting, which causes what we refer to as couch fusion. There has been an alarming growth in couch fusion in the past couple of centuries. Before this, the problem was non-existent. That is not a made-up problem. I suffered from couch fusion from the age of eight until, until I was 16. Oh my god. And then, and then again when I was 25 to my 30th birthday. I am a miserable excuse for a human. <laughs> Couches have also been known to hold unexpected goodies encouraging the exploration of their crevices. It's repulsive. This constant possibility of obtaining an unexpected goodie compels people to impulsively search for, then consume, said goodies, thereby leading to even more obesity, especially amongst professional couch scavengers and old men. If you're obese to the point of not being able to stand in the shower, you shouldn't be allowed to live. I use a shower chair! <laughs> Why am I still allowed to continue my pitiful existence? <laughs> oh, oh. Often I soil myself with three specimens of waste within the period of a rainy desk. A shower chair is a chair for the shower. It is commonly used by the disabled and old men with arthritic knees and the toes of an infant. Shower chairs themselves are an unnecessary existence. If you can't stand in the shower, just take a bath. Otherwise, we recommend to just stew in your own filth. A toilet is a specialized chair wherein humans dispose of their waste products anywhere from three times a day to three times each week. Less than three movements a week may indicate constipation, and more than three watery stools a day may indicate diarrhea. In general, stools should be brown or golden brown, be formed, have a texture similar to peanut butter, and have a size and shape similar to that of a sausage. Hemorrhoids. Sitting while defecating is not the natural position, thus leading to hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids are an entirely westernized problem, as in eastern countries, people use squatting facilities and not the gym toilet abomination. There is another, more lethal side effect of toilet usage. Spontaneous unintended pluggages cause asphyxiation by methane gas. As many as one person has a chance of dying this year from such an odorous cause. It's not a funny occurrence. I lost my third wife to toilet-based methane asphyxiation. If you ask me, they suck out your soul through your hiney. I miss my third wife. She was one of my favorites because of her freckled nostrils. Oh, those nostrils. And her handsome build. Definitely in the top five. Oh, come on. However, the number one flaw of the toilet is that it's just way too confusing to use. I would have to agree with that. I have yet to figure out my own toilet. And I still live in the house I grew up in. Oh, I am such a loser. Often I go to the beach. And I know that my excess fat waves. Oh, it waves in the breeze more than the ocean itself. Oh. Body chairs. They're encrusted with death! Oh. As I was trying to say. Oh, sorry. 
Potty chairs are smaller versions of the specialized chair toilet and are used for brainwashing infant humans into believing that the use of toilets is both beneficial and socially acceptable. Sitting during defecation weakens the midsection and leads to an abundance of flabby growths around the armpits. In other words, they are the root of all toilet-based lies. A commonly overlooked fact about potty chairs is that they encourage the consumption of chocolate, both solid and melted, leading to diabetes in later life. It is a real psychological phenomenon. While yet unstudied, it is generally accepted as the truth. Yep, it sounds about right. Stool hands, they violated me repeatedly until I worked up the necessary courage to contact the authorities. Even then, I was but a grotesque husk of a man. Well on my way to eternal turmoil. My innocence, but a soiled raisin or two. <laughs> With practically no positive qualities, can there even be a good variety of chair? Well, there's only one chair that can be used for good instead of evil. The electric chair. It is widely believed that the most optimal use of the electric chair is to destroy other chairs, as chairs need to be destroyed by the hands of their own kind. That way, they will become demoralized and give up on their plan to save humanity. They are the most alluring kind of chair, with its attractive low stature close to the ground and its irresistible upholstered seat. Oh. Oh. We just have to accept their existence in our miserable world, whether we want to or not. I don't know if I can bear this chair-filled world. Humankind is doomed! Often I wonder, my fathers, they abandoned me to a nudist colony in Maine, northern Maine, actually, only to be rejected and left, left to die amongst the Appalachian Mountains. There I lived without light for 1,000 days, raw fish and brown water, my only supplementers. Upon finding my precious, I became abnormal of body and of mind. Once, long ago, I was not unlike a hobbit, but I had changed. Many people Change. give in to the temptation and lust after hassocks and go to great lengths to obtain them. It disturbs my soul and causes me to become sore. Avoiding the hassock seduction techniques is a must. We don't know what that is either. It sounds Russian. Many people are shocked to hear just how much the American government conceals about chairs. In increasing numbers, Chair experts are spreading the truth about the chair's stranglehold on American democracy. There is a plague of chair-related deaths, sweeping not only the nation, but the entire country. However, the bad American government is covering up these deaths by labeling them as accidents or suicides. Chairs are the cause of the largest blockage of the American dream since the Great Depression. It's depressing, like my life. Often, I find myself trying to reach down and touch my toes, for I haven't trimmed them in decades, let alone 10 years. Oh. It's not just the direct actions of the chairs that the government is hiding. It's also the counterfeit chair market. This counterfeit chair syndicate recently surged in 2008, causing the stock market crash on Wall Street that same year. Ever since, these fake chairs have been severely slowing domestic economic growth, allowing China to increase the quality of their 
down thy sitcoms. The government pushed the blame for the financial disaster onto the banks and the housing market inflation. They were trying to hide the true cause. Oh. It was discovered in the Cold War that chairs were actually the root of all socialism. But not wanting to cause widespread public terror in, in America, it was kept secret by the government. Often I wonder what and how many truths were denied to me by my fathers. From the overrated computer chair to the crutch, foundation, and advocate of obesity, and from hat socks to poop bags, chairs have many terrors that may disgust you. They corrupt our youth, control our economy, and are spawned from Satan's loins of evil. With only one wholesome chair, many questions remain. Is there any way to escape the slavery that chairs have put us in? Are humans losing control? Will Buddha offer us salvation from this godforsaken life dominated by chairs? Are our lives insignificant objects in the face of the chair's everlasting power? Get to be down from here! Oh my god! Is humanity doomed to rot within the seats of chairs forever? <laughs> Is suicide really the only way out? Everybody take off your pants. 